There is a single cue that is absolutely plaguing anybody who is trying to use the indoor rowing machine. It stands in direct opposition to one of the taglines that I use to help you guys learn how to use the rowing machine. And if I could wipe it as a cue off the face of the earth, I would absolutely do that. Let's talk about why this thing is so, so painful and what we can do to change the way we perceive it. Now, I'm not one to very often say absolutely not. I leave a wide swath of discussion area for almost everything, but this cue, just this tip, this widely used, coaches everywhere, rowers everywhere using it. You're probably even using it in your own sublingual or subconscious communication. And the tip is pull. That's it, one word. And it is single-handedly undermining all of the good work that you are trying to do on this machine. Let's talk about the why, because once we fix the why, we can fix the how, and we can make everybody's lives better, and we'll go off to create a utopian society. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, where you build the life that you wanna live, and we just happen to use rowing to help you get there. So this tip of pull, it's gonna come from somewhere. My best guess is that it comes from the fact that when most people think rowing, they're actually imagining a rowboat, which is not rowing. Ironic, because it's called a rowboat or like a paddle boat. It's the big wooden structure that you imagine out in the middle of some small lake in a big European city and there are swans everywhere and you're throwing breadcrumbs out to the swans and taking the love of your life out for a picnic down out in the middle of the lake somewhere and you're just kind of heave hoeing this big wooden rowboat through a lake. That's not rowing. Or maybe it is rowing, but it's not the rowing that we're doing when we're on a rowing machine. Rowing on a rowing machine is all about leg push. So inherently our brains are trying to fill in the gaps. Well, if I've never rowed, then what do I think it is? Well, I think that it is this idea of being in a rowboat, big wooden thing. But in reality, rowing, if you were go, well, let's, you can see they are using this big push of the legs, then a swing of the hips, and then it's a pull of the arms. And the arms, honestly, are just the icing on the cake. But where the issue comes in is that when we think pull, if we're imagining our anatomy, our whole body, and I tell you to pull something, you're probably imagining pull with your arms. You don't really think like, how do I, I wouldn't pull with my legs. What is that? How do I, or pull with my hip? I don't know. I can't really create a pull sensation there. So if I tell you to pull, you're doing this. That is probably the biggest error location that we find with people's rowing mechanics is that they're trying to pull with the arms and the break of the elbow starts to weaken the entire stroke because it means that the power from the legs can't transfer to the machine and all of a sudden, and your arms burn out, your forearms get tired, your biceps get tired, your grip goes, and, you, and you're just doing a lot of this. Well, that isn't really effective rowing. In effective rowing, we are using the legs. So why do you think the slogan here at Dark Horse is push, don't pull? Well, because if I can make you think push, and if you can make this paradigm shift, this just 180 degree turn, boop, and if you can imagine that you are pushing, what is the thing, sorry, what is the thing that you are imagining pushing with? If I say push, you, you might think push with the arms or push with the legs. Well, if I'm telling you to make the rowing stroke a push, well, this doesn't make much sense, so let's push with the legs. And if you can change how your brain perceives the movement to simply consider that the rowing stroke is a big form of pushing through the legs, well, we've tapped into this just easy subconscious shift that you can make to increase your body's ability to connect to the machine. Okay, enough on the why and, and what we're changing it to. We know that we're going to a push. Now, aside from just making this brain shift, aside from just thinking about the stroke differently, what can we functionally do to make the stroke better and no longer have to worry about the pull eliminating your ability to drive force into the machine? Well, there's one single drill that is incredibly effective to help you practice this over and over and over and over. Now, it does get a little bit frustrating because it's going to take you probably out of your element. And frankly, if we're working on the mechanics of the stroke and it didn't feel out of your element, I'd be more concerned <laughs> because if it feels natural, we're probably not unwinding our bad habits. And so allow this to feel a little bit unnatural. I'm going to show it to you and then I'm actually going to do it with you for just a little bit so you can follow along. And what you'll find is that as we do this together, it's just going to click. You're going to start to understand after you do it 
vivid enough how the push can be so impactful into the stroke, but it means that you gotta undo a little bit of what you have been doing with the pull of the arms by pushing with the legs. Okay, so this drill, again, it's only one thing that I need you to think about, and that is learning how to use the legs as opposed to leaning with the body or pulling with the arms. There's not much to this, <laughs> and that may be the most frustrating piece of it, is we are going to sit at the catch position. Now, I wanna run through a real quick checklist of the proper catch position. It is hands wide on the handle, hands nice and relaxed, so that that handle is sitting in the knuckles as opposed to in the palm of your hand. If the handle's touching the palm of your hand, real good chance that you're gripping way too tight. So, handle sitting in the knuckles, not the palm of the hand, elbows extended, shoulders reaching, and then down. Now try to drop those shoulders down without pulling them back. So let the shoulder reach, shoulders down. Then you want a nice neutral spine. So I don't want you broken open and I also don't want you rounding. So do your best. A good way to think about that is from this seated position, kind of lift your butt cheeks behind you to get you into a bit more of a pelvic tilt that, that can allow you to have a neutral spine, which is going to put the hips behind the shoulders. I want the trunk or the, the spine at 11 o'clock, or I guess for you, it would probably be one o'clock. Either way, 11 or one, that body is in that forward angle. You're your knees are tracking underneath the arms, heels are gonna be down, and then we wanna get as far forward and tight as possible without giving up any of those items on the checklist. So no knees splaying out, no heels lifting, no back rounding. With that being said, that's that perfect catch position. You're gonna set up in the catch, and you're gonna row. <clears throat> Legs only. It's that simple. You're gonna refuse to let the hips open. You're gonna refuse to pull with the arms. And you're simply going to practice the push of the legs. You don't even have to fully extend the legs. You can practice just little quarter pushes that are intended to get you feeling, how do I push through the leg so that it creates tension or resistance on the handle? Because once you have that, you'll lose the feeling of needing to, to bend that elbow. The bend of the elbow is because we're not sure how to trigger the legs to access tension on the handle. You gotta brace through the midline, you gotta push through the legs. So, how often, well, I mentioned, I'm gonna mention how much I think you should do this at, at the end of this, but I'm gonna go for one minute with you. I'm gonna set a little timer here. We're gonna do it for one minute. We're just gonna do it together. So follow me on this. Don't let the shoulders open. Don't let the elbows break. It's okay if you get frustrated with me. That's part of the job of being a coach is <laughs> accepting that. And uh, with that being said, let's sit ready. And three, two, one, go. <sighs> It's not fast. It doesn't even have to be that powerful. You just need to learn how to connect the legs. Match me exactly. Just make it easy on yourself. Do exactly what I'm doing. Think about squeezing your triceps so the elbows stay straight. And what you might find is the fingers do a little bit of feathering to help you establish tension. We got 15 seconds left. Look at that, we're already through it. Your back might be feeling tight right now, that's pretty normal. And there's our minute. Handle down, unstrap. And that's it, that's our drill, legs only. Back has to work, midline has to work. Arms don't work other than just holding you onto the handle. That's simple enough. And it's the legs that are doing the work, learning how to turn them on to push into the machine. So here's my suggestion for how often and how much to do this drill to eliminate this tip that you may have been thinking of or coaches have been giving you that's ruining your chances at performance. Take this drill, run this for about two weeks, three times a week for five minutes. Now it doesn't have to be five minutes straight. That's pretty tiring. But accumulate five minutes of this three times a week for two weeks. That's not much time. And at the end of that two weeks, report back. How does it feel? I wanna know in the comments below because what you're going to start to understand is how do I hang from the handle? How do I brace through the midline? How do I push through the legs? And it just prioritizes that early push of the legs and that's going to just have a profound impact on your performance on this machine. And if I could just gift this to all of you, if I could Santa Claus this to everybody in one night and just magical fairy dust, the tip of pushing into every household across the world, I would do so.
Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it because you will be alerted when I come out with new videos. Do you realize how critical that is? In like eight minutes-ish, we just figured out how to solve the big, single biggest problem you might have. Why would you not want more of that? And if you're looking for some workouts to help you along in the way, think about checking out our beginner series where in 10 minutes, I take you through a workout and you, little, you learn a little bit of something, just a little bit, I promise.